Hello, all of my wonderful Facebook friends. Welcome. Um, okay, today is an exciting day. Today we have a special guest who's going to talk to us about some special things I'm going to ask questions of. And just really quick, I'm Amy Parson. I'm a holistic health coach. I love to help people improve their health and to empower them to live healthier lives. So just really quickly, I want to introduce our guest. Our guest today is my sister, Lisa Mitten. So Mary is usually on with me, but she can't be on today. But Lisa is going to join us in just a second. Uh, so Lisa is a wife and mother uh, of three kids, and she um, lives near the Portland area. And she has recently become a certified yoga instructor. So let's welcome Lisa. Hi. Hi. <laughs> How's it going? Great. I'm so excited to have you today. Well, so, I'm excited to be here. <laughs> so tell everybody, when did you start yoga and what really got you into it? Okay, first off, too much information. I'm in my mid-50s. <laughs> and I started yoga in my mid 40s. And what got me into it was the day I sat on the floor to do some stretches and my arm didn't go higher than this. And can you see? <laughs> <laughs> and I freaked out thinking what has happened to me because I've always been involved in sports and I love just being active and to have my shoulder joint so bound up, it scared me. And I thought I have got to get in and do something to help my body. And I also was having some nerve issues in my hip. Um, I was running quite a bit at the time and I was self-diagnosed with sciatica. I don't know if it, that's really what it was, but you know, the nerve pain going up and down from the glute and it was quite, um, disturbing and distressful. And I found as I was stretching a bit, that would help it. And so between the shoulder and the hip, I decided yoga and my running partner, we started adding in some yoga in with our running. And so that was quite an eye opener because it immediately began to help my hip and the nerve issue. But then I started to regain some mobility in my arm. Oh, and I almost forgot balance. Um, going up and down stairs, I found that I felt a little unsteady on the down and I was always grabbing the handrail. And so balance was another thing I was started to become concerned about and knew that yoga could help that and benefit that. And so those three issues pushed me into yoga and I started in my mid forties and found rapid improvement. Now, granted my balance, I wouldn't call my balance excellent, but I can go up and down stairs comfortably now without feeling stressed about it. My arm goes up to my head now. It's not great. My shoulder movement, you know, isn't what it used to be in my 20s and never will be, but it is so much better than it was. Awesome. You may be able to hear um, piano playing in my house because someone's practicing the piano right now. <laughs> so I'm trying, to, to I'm trying to yell to them, but <laughs> you might just hear Beauty and the Beast in the background. <laughs> um, so I will mute myself in between questions. But um, Okay, so tell us what is yoga and why do we need it? Um, yoga means different things to the average population. Uh, the average population, when they think of yoga, they think of stretching. They think of the yoga postures, the crazy forms that people get themselves into and the binds and upside down and, and they think of things like that. For me, in my studies, yoga, the word yoga itself means unite and oneness, coming together. And it's really a process to unite us with the divine, with God. Or if you don't believe in God, with the universe, becoming one with Mother Nature, um, with yourself, the real self, true self, inner self. So yoga is a process and Patanjali sutras um, are a form of what I would call scripture for yoga uh, people. And um, I believe maybe even Buddhist religion, but don't quote me on that one. I'm not sure, but they're ancient. It's an ancient book of, of I'm going to call it scripture for them. And it describes the process of yoga. And it's not just about the asanas. The asanas is one step out of eight steps. 
So the first step are the yamas, and it's how we interact with each other as humans, interact with the world around us. You may remember, oh, the hippie movement, peace, love, calm, right? Um, yoga was a big part of that too. And nonviolence is a big part of it. But you got to remember when we say nonviolence, we mean non-harming, that the words we say, the actions we do don't hurt others in any way, not just punching or killing, you know, that kind of thing. It means truly taking care of one another. Um, anyway, so the yamas are the first step and it's interaction with the world. Niyamas are the second step and it's how we are with ourselves, our cleanliness, our inner thoughts, etc. There's five yamas and five niyamas. After that come the poses, the asanas, what we typically think of, followed by pranayama, which is the breathing. Many people think of the breathing and the calming. All of those are to help us build to the next steps, which are the meditation steps. There's pratihara, dharana, dhyana, and samadhi. And those are different steps along the meditation pathway that ultimately gets us to samadhi, which can be defined as like blissful. It's that state of union with the divine, with our inner self, with the universe. And that's ultimately the goal of yoga as a whole, that whole picture of yoga, not just the breathing and the postures to move us along that path. Awesome. I've never heard that before. <laughs> okay. Um, so how how do you get from being a couch potato to a yoga practicer and what are like the struggles that we might expect along the way well first off you have to have that desire and many of us can sit on the couch and have the desire but to actually get onto the mat is the hard part and so I know, Amy, that you've read books on goal setting, et cetera. The first part is roll out the mat. Even if you go back and sit down on the couch, get that <laughs> mat rolled out. Um, and secondly, you got to decide, how am I going to practice? Am I going to watch a YouTube video? Am I going to do it in person? And having some form of accountability helps. So I have a partner. And every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we meet at 5 a.m., which is super early. <laughs> but knowing that my friend is going to be waiting for me gets me out my bedroom door, out of bed, to the mat to meet with her. And half the time I'm yawning and such. But so having some way to be accountable, someone to do it with helps. And sometimes paying money so that you're going to a studio, going to a gym, going someplace, just that fact that you've got money on the line might help too. <laughs> um, and having that physical reason, like I did, shoulder, my hips, some type of motivation physically that you want to achieve can help as well. And then what was the second part of the question? Like the struggles, obstacles? What are the struggles that we can expect? Uh, well, we can cause injury in our body. And when I first started my, well, maybe it was a little bit after I started, but my wrist started to get really sore. And that can happen to a lot of people because of down dog and the pressure on the wrist. And so learning how to manage that, how to modify, change the poses so that if you are feeling some tightness, and also we always want to fit that pose. We want to make our bodies look like that cool pose that we've seen on Instagram or YouTube or wherever. You know, you see those pictures of people doing these amazing poses. So we have in our mind, we want to look like that. We got to step back from that and realize, you know what? My body may not fit that pose. I need to take that pose and have it fit my body, how it feels good for me and what's right for me. And maybe you're modifying and changing. Maybe you use a block instead um, of sitting on the floor or whatever it be. Learning those techniques and then having the inner strength to say, I'm going to do what's right for my body and not try and compete with the person on the mat next to me. They're doing another round of sun salutation. I'm going to do it too. 
you know? <laughs> so really listening to your body can be a struggle instead of, because we want to compete. We want to look good. We want to do what everyone else is doing. Great. Okay. So once we're there, once we're a yoga practicer, what can we expect from life? You know, it's really been interesting because as my life has gotten more chaotic, the more I've turned to yoga. Because just practicing yoga helps you center, helps you focus on being present in life, and helps you step back and be an observer instead of just being always anxious and worried and stressed. When you can step back and say, oh, that was a worry thought that went through my brain. You know, I can't do anything about that now, but huh, that was interesting. And just noticing. So it's really helped calm me and center me. And many people say that when they come to yoga, they feel like they get the benefits of um, physical therapy because a lot of yoga poses are similar to what takes place with physical therapy. But then they also get that breathing, that centering, that calming and relaxation that can help them carry out into the rest of their lives to just bring them to a place of more calm and peace. Okay. What's the biggest lesson that you've learned that you want everyone to walk away with? Yoga is great. <laughs> Seriously. I, want everyone to practice yoga and many people are adverse to it and I'll start talking and be all excited and I can see I tune them out but um <laughs> I would just love for people to give it a try great so tell us how we can stay in touch with you or get in touch with you okay I have a Facebook um it is face what is it Amy youthful yoga toiletton yeah, Can't even I'm remember post my a couple links too, but go ahead and tell them the names. Youthful Yoga and Toiletton. And then I have a YouTube channel and I'm having so much fun with that. I've been doing children's videos and then I've started putting on some um, chair yoga because I really want to help those that have struggled getting up and down off a mat. They can sit in a chair. You can do so much yoga sitting in a chair and working on that mobility. And so for people that have had surgeries or maybe as we age and our mobility decreases, senior citizens, I want to provide that access for everyone. So YouTube channels, a great way to keep track of me and what I'm doing. Um, also, maybe we can have another one, Amy, at some point, yeah. a chat on about yin yoga because I've got a great series on YouTube and I'd love to describe yin yoga. Most people, when they do yoga, they do vinyasa or hatha. And yin is a, a great asset as well to complement vinyasa and hatha yoga. Then I have an Instagram, which is youthful yoga toiletin. Um, at least I'm trying, trying to get the name to match up with Facebook right now. So hopefully when people look for it, it will match. And then I have a website that still has some glitches, but we're working on it. And it's youthfulyoga.live. So come Great. visit me. Great. Sounds awesome. And you teach there in the Tualatin area, right? Yes. I teach in a, a studio next door in Sherwood called Escape to Yoga. Great. And I will post those links in the comments as well. Well, thank you so much for being on with us today. And I hope everyone has a health empowered day. And we'll talk to you next time. Thanks, Amy.